hello everybody, welcome to our online service. We are so pleased that you are with us today. Whether you're exploring faith for the first time, checking out what we're all about, or being here on a Sunday is just what you do, know that you are so welcome. Today we're going to continue our series of what it is to be wise, thinking especially about what this means during times of suffering, something which is so relevant for our world today in these challenging times. Today we're going to pray, we're going to worship, James is going to share a reflection and Claire's going to bring something for our children and our youth. Our prayer is that all of us, from the youngest to the oldest, from those that are here every week to those that have never been before, that we would all together encounter the living God. So let's worship him together now. Ever present God around us, within us, God of eternity, God of the here and now, God of the big picture, whose loving purposes embrace the whole world, God of the smallest detail, closer to us than breathing. God, whose grace is sufficient for all our needs, we come now to worship you. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now We are in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurts the sick the poor at peace Lay down our lives for heaven's cause We are your church And we pray revive this earth Build your kingdom here Let the darkness be Show your mighty streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the No force of hell can stop Your beauty changing hearts You made us for much more than this Awake the kingdom seed in us Fill us with the strength and love of Christ We are your church Show me 
Almighty hand in the streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray this is job Job was a good man, quite handsome I think, and Job loved God. Job had everything that he ever wanted. One day, out of nowhere, Job lost everything he ever had. He was so incredibly sad, but he still loved God. But then, after a while, Job got back everything that he lost, and he celebrated. He was happy, and he still loved God. So the story of Job teaches us that bad things and good things can happen to any of us. Sometimes good things happen for no reason and sometimes bad things happen for no reason. But through it all, we stay with God and he walks with us through everything. I think we can say a prayer. Will you say a prayer with me? I'll say a line and then you say, help me to love you. God like you love me. Should we pray? God when I have everything, let's say together, help me to love you God like you love me. When I have nothing, help me to love you God like you love me. When I am happy, help me to love you God like you love me. And when I'm sad, help me to love you, God, like you love me. Amen. So I wonder if any of you have ever had this experience where you've confided in a friend hoping for some comfort from them and actually what they say really doesn't help. I remember telling uh, an adult when I was a kid that our cat had died and they said to me that there is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. The statement's true but it really didn't help in the moment, it sort of made things worse for me. I just felt terrible and really not comforted by that person. Now in the book of Job we see Job, he turns to his three friends in the middle of his suffering. He looks to them for comfort and for help and they really try to give their best wisdom, they try to help him understand the situation but the things they say are not helpful to Job. They tell him that, you know, maybe he did something wrong and that's why bad things have happened to him. Or maybe he displeased God and he was being punished. None of it really made sense to Job. Now, I'd really encourage you to stick around and listen to James's talk today because he's going to shed a lot of light on the book of Job for us and help us to understand the complexities of that situation. Um, but for now, I want you to have a think. What would you say to Job? What would you say to anyone in the middle of real suffering when they've lost everything? Is there anything we can say at all? Is there something else we can do? What do we think is the best thing to do? And do we have any of our own wisdom to add? Also, if anyone's ever given you, you know, bad advice, or maybe you've put your foot in your mouth, I'd like to hear those stories as well. So we'll have a chat on Thursday in our Zoom group. Um, I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your 
perfect love is casting out fear And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back, I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? We sing, go oh, no, you never let go. Through the calm, through the storm, oh no, you never let go. In every high and every low, no, you never let go. See a light that is coming for the heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes We live to know you here on the earth Cause I will fear no My God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Cause we sing, oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high. Very low, oh, no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Cause I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. But there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will. Many years ago, a man named Job lived in the land of Uz. He was a truly good person who respected God and refused to do evil. Job had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pair of oxen, 500 donkeys and a large number of servants. He was the richest person in the East. One day, when the angels had gathered around the Lord and Satan was there with them, the Lord asked, Satan, where have you been? Satan replied, I've been going all over the earth. Then the Lord asked, What do you think of my servant Job? No one on earth is like him. He's a truly good person who respects me and refuses to do evil. Why shouldn't he respect you? Satan remarked. You are like a wall protecting not only him, but his entire family and all his property. You make him successful in whatever he does, and his flocks and herds are everywhere. Try taking away everything he owns, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord replied, All right, Satan, do what you want with anything that belongs to him, but do not harm Job. Then Satan left. After Job had prayed for his three friends, the Lord made Job twice as rich as he had been before. Then Job gave a feast for his brothers and sisters and for his old friends. They expressed their sorrow for the suffering the Lord had brought on him, and they each gave Job some silver and a gold ring. The Lord now blessed Job more than ever, and in addition to seven sons, Job had three daughters whose names were Jeremiah, 
Keziah, Kem and Hapuk. They were the most beautiful women in that part of the world and Job gave them shares in his property along with their brothers. Hi everyone, really pleased that you're able to join us as we explore this theme of wisdom and how do we live wisely. And we're going to do it today through the book of Job. Now, I had one of those weeks where in about kind of midweek uh, through, I suddenly got stuck on a situation. I couldn't quite work out what the best thing was to do, how to address this problem, how to approach it, whether it's a kind of face-to-face -face or a Zoom or a phone call or a text or what really I should be feeling about it. And I was kind of stuck. And so I phoned a wise friend uh, called Diane. So Diane, if you're listening, hello to you. And I had a good chat with Diane. And suddenly after her just speaking common sense, I was unstuck and I could just kind of carry on with life. Now, that is a little example of wisdom. But the wisdom that we're looking at this afternoon or this morning, whenever you're watching it, the wisdom from Job isn't about the everyday stuff. The book of Job is about things that are far bigger and far deeper and things that matter far more than just, I'm not quite sure what to do in this situation. This book of Job deals with things about pain, about suffering, about God, about evil, about the devil, about goodness, about friendship. It deals with the things that really matter the most and really cause us the most anxiety. Now, the Book of Job, they think, is one of the earliest pieces of literature actually ever written by humankind, which is interesting, isn't it? Because if you look on today's shelves, most of the literature is about how to improve yourself or how to be successful, how to be an amazing leader or how to make money, how to have the right status. But actually, isn't it interesting that one of the earliest pieces of writing that humankind ever came up with was a poem, a parable that we call Job. And it was all about the problem of suffering. And Job asked the question, why does God allow suffering? Now, if you know the book of Job, and Steph read the introduction to us, we know that Job goes through horrendous suffering, losing family, his friends turn on him, losing his livelihood, physically in pain and in agony. Yet the thing about it, the story is this. We, as the readers or the listeners, we know perfectly well why Job is going through his suffering. But Job doesn't. And so what we discover as the readers of the book is simply this, is that Satan comes to God one day and says, well, Job loves you, God, because he gets so much out of it. By loving you, he gets a nice family. By loving you, he gets a decent job. And actually, he's quite rich and he gets wisdom. Satan says to God, now what happens if all of that is taken away? Will he still love you, God? In other words, is God still worth loving when things don't work out for us as his followers. And that's the background. That's what's going on in the book of Job that Job doesn't know, but the readers do. And then comes the big moment, I think later on in the book, when God speaks to Job. Now, if you've read the book, you're expecting when God speaks to Job, God says to him this, Job, this is why it all happened. Basically, Satan came to me. It's a bit awkward at the time. And we did this deal, but you've come through it. And uh, you're going to have a, lot, a big book written about you. And God says nothing about that. Job dies and passes away, never knowing why he went through that suffering. Jesus died with the words, why, on his lips in Mark's Gospel. Jesus died in that place of questioning, why am I going through this agony and this pain? Why have you forsaken me? It seems like sometimes we don't know why we do go through the suffering and the pain that we do. It seems like in the economy of God, sometimes suffering is actually a mystery. And the desire to know why is a right desire, but it appears that sometimes God actually doesn't tell us. In my 20s and 30s, I was in a church in London. I was the leader there and I was part of the wider leadership team and absolutely loved it. It taught me loads about ministry and life and the Bible. But it also gave me something which I don't have anymore. And that is absolute certainty. I knew exactly what God was going to do next. I knew exactly what the answers were to all the difficult questions about life, faith and the Bible. And I certainly didn't have any mystery that Job and actually Jesus had to live with. But then one day, suffering began to hit me. The suffering of my mum dying, the suffering of one of my staff members dying in her early 20s, unexpectedly. 
the suffering of my wife having cancer twice and living through that with all the pain and the agony and the hope. The suffering of other friends dying when you really you think if I was God I wouldn't have let that one go. And that experience of suffering simply meant this. That as the years have gone by, most of us would experience more and more suffering. And what we learn about it is this, is that sometimes we have to embrace mystery. Sometimes God doesn't always give us the why, but he does give us the resources to live through it and to cope with it and to come out the other end. And I wonder if that's the kind of people that this world needs now. Not those who walk around thinking, as Christians, we've got all the answers. We can sum it all up and just ask me and here's the answer but actually are people who embrace mystery, who are mature enough to cope with life's mysteries and questions. And yet, like Job, we keep on loving God despite that. We keep on following God despite that. And what we learn is this, is that God's fullest revelation isn't in a systematic theology that explains everything, but is in himself hanging on a tree for love of the world. And in that moment, we see that in the mystery, what we can see and what we can feel is his deep personal love for each and every one of us. And my prayer is simply this, that whatever we are going through, that we learn to accept we might not always know the why, but we can always know that deep personal love of God. And if we don't know the why, and if we feel battered and hemmed in and confused, it probably means we're doing something right. We're on the right track. We're keeping company with the right people in this world. The likes of Job, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jesus, Paul, Mary. And it's those kinds of people that the world needs to see who reflect God's love in a deep and mysterious, beautiful and broken way. Amen.
We have heard about you, God of all power. You made the world out of kindness, creating order out of confusion. You made each one of us in your own image. Your fingerprint is on every soul. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. We have heard about you, Jesus Christ, the carpenter who left his tools and trade, the poor man who made others rich, the healer who let himself be wounded, the criminal on whom the soldiers spat, not knowing they were failing the face of God, the saviour who died and rose again. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. We have heard about you, Holy Spirit. You broke the bonds of every race and nation to let God speak in every tongue. You made the disciples drunk with grace. You converted souls and emptied pockets. You showed how love made all things new and opened the doors to change and freedom. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On, On earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins. sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Now and forever. Amen.
thank you for joining us. We hope today has been a real help and a blessing. We'd also like to say thank you to those of you who've given financially to the work of Top Church. It really does make a difference. And if you haven't yet given and would like to, the details of how you can do this are going to appear on the screen shortly. Our service today is going to continue on Zoom where we're going to share communion together. If you'd like to join us, please do email admin at topchurch.co.uk so that we can give you the login details that you need. But first, let's join together in saying a prayer of blessing and the words for this are going to appear on the screen now. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things will pass away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, this day and always. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.